Welcome to the Chemistry 1A pre-lab lecture for Experiment 4, Separating Mixtures and Recrystallization. The learning objective of this experiment is to understand definitions of types of matter, to become familiar with the methods to separate solids and liquids, to practice your mass determination techniques, and to calculate the percent composition of the mixture. In today's experiment, you are going to be given a mixture of three pure substances and asked to separate them. Your experimental objectives are first to determine the mass of the original sample mixture. Second, separate this mixture into its three components of sand, acetanilide, and sodium chloride based on their solubility in water. Once you've done this, you will determine the mass of each of the pure components. And last, you'll determine the percent composition of each of these components within the original mixture. Matter can be loosely grouped into two broad categories. Those categories are pure substances and mixtures. A pure substance has a fixed physical and chemical property. This means that no matter where this substance is collected, on the Earth, on Mars, at the bottom of the ocean, it will behave the same way, both physically and chemically. Pure substances can be either a single element from the periodic table, or a compound that has a fixed ratio of these elements. For example, we know that oxygen is two oxygen atoms to make oxygen gas, where glucose, or simple sugar, is a combination of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen at a ratio of 6, 12, 6. To separate a pure substance into a simpler substance, it requires chemical breaking of bonds, so a pure substance can only be made simpler through chemistry. On the other hand, mixtures can be physically separated by sieving or filtering in different ways. This is because a mixture is a physical combination of different pure substances. It has no fixed properties as the mixture depends on how it was prepared, what ratio the different pure substances are included in. So as I mentioned, a pure substance is either a pure element or a compound. There are 108 known types of elements that make up our universe, and they're all laid out on the periodic table. A single atom of an element cannot be broken down by chemical or physical means. Compounds, however, are chemically bonded groups of elements in a fixed elemental ratio, and they can be separated down to individual elements through chemistry. Example of elements are things like helium, iron, silver, nitrogen, whereas compounds would be things like ammonia, salt, sugar, carbon dioxide, and so on. When we combine pure substances to form a mixture, we can have two possible results. We can either have a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture, which is uniform by I, or we can have a heterogeneous mixture, where we can clearly see the different components within the mixture. Homogeneous mixtures are things like salt dissolved in water, or the air that we breathe, which we know to be a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. Examples of heterogeneous mixtures would be things like a piece of granite. You may think of your granite countertop in your home, where you can see the little flecks of white and gray and black that represent the quartz and the mica and different minerals within the rock. Or you could think of a soda or carbonated water where you see the bubbles within the liquid. These would be examples of heterogeneous mixtures. When describing matter, we talk about physical properties and chemical properties, but what is meant by these terms? Well, physical properties mean what does this matter really look like? What is its state? Is it a solid, a liquid, or a gas? How large are the particles? What is its boiling point and melting point? When does it tra transition between the three states? What color is it? Does it have an odor? And also, how dense is it? How heavy is it? 
Chemical properties, on the other hand, are less tangible. These are properties of elemental composition, so which elements are included and in which ratios? What is the percent composition of this compound? And how would it react when it is combined with other types of compounds? What is its reactivity? These would be chemical properties. So we're going to use these different physical properties of our mixture to separate it into pure substances. Your sample is going to be a mixture of acetanilide, which is pictured on the bottom left here as a large organic molecule, salt, which is just an ionic compound of sodium and chloride ions, and sand, which can be generally described as silicate or silicon dioxide. And these three compounds behave differently in water, and so we can use their solubility in water to separate them. Sand, as you know, is insoluble in water. Salt, on the other hand, will dissolve quite readily in water, whether it is cold or hot. Acetanilide is insoluble in cold water, or very, very limited solubility in cold water, but dissolves quite well in hot water. It's noted here that acetanilide is soluble in acetone because you will be provided with this solvent to assist in drying your sand sample. You want to make sure that you do not expose any acetanilide to acetone as it will dissolve. So there's three basic techniques that we will be using to separate our compounds. The first is decanting, and then filtration, and then recrystallization. Decanting is a simple process of pouring a liquid off slowly, allowing the solid to settle in your original container. It's done by carefully pouring the liquid out of your vessel that contains both a solid and a liquid, and touching the tip of your container to a glass rod so that the liquid flows directly out of your original vessel, down the length of the rod, and into the receptacle for the liquid. This method of separating a liquid from a solid is not as quantitative as some other methods, since some of the liquid will remain with the solid. There are two types of filtration that can be used to separate a solid from a liquid. The first is gravity filtration, the second is vacuum filtration, and I'll be describing both of these methods. With filtration, you pour a mixture of solid and liquid substances through a filter. The filter allows the passage of fluids while collecting the solids. We refer to the liquid that passes through the filter as the filtrate. The collected solid attached to the filter is referred to as the filtrant. So gravity filtration is something that most of us have a lot of experience with. It's basically how you prepare coffee using a drip filter. You'll be provided with a funnel and an Erlenmeyer and a circular piece of paper which you'll fold into a cone similar to a coffee filter. You'll then pour the mixture through the funnel with the filter and allow the liquid to drip through. This process is very effective in removing heavy granular solids such as coffee grounds or sand. Vacuum filtration is a much faster way of filtering in which the receptacle Erlenmeyer has a vacuum applied to it so that all of the air is removed from the flask, pulling the sample through the filter and pulling air along with it so that the sample is dried after it is filtered. Vacuum filtration is more quantitative as it pulls all of the filtrate through and does not leave any with the sample. It's also, it's also very good at getting the sample, the solid portion of the sample dry. It's very important to note though that vacuum filtration is not to be done using hot solutions since the presence of a vacuum will cause hot solutions to rapidly boil, presenting a dangerous situation in a sealed flask. Recrystallization is a method for isolating pure crystalline solids by exploiting its solubility. Recrystallization is a separation technique that can be done with a solid that is partially soluble or insoluble in cold water, but fully soluble in hot water. 
This is done by first dissolving the mixture in the hot solvent, so in this case water, and then insoluble contaminants can be removed through either gravity filtration or decanting. The filtrate containing our substance to be recrystallized is allowed to cool, and so with the lowering temperature of the solvent, the substance will form a solid or crystal. By forming this crystalline solid, it is isolating itself from the other contaminants that are still soluble in the cold water. Your lab instructor will be going through with you how to set up the different types of filtration, recrystallization, and decanting. But just to make sure that we have a foreknowledge of what we're going into and to make sure nothing gets missed, I have a couple of technical tips for you. First off, it may be helpful to weigh your filter paper before using it in any filtration step. This way, it might make it simpler to weigh your collected solid by simply weighing the solid on the filter paper and deducting the mass of the filter paper prior to use. Sometimes our sample sticks to our filter paper and it's not possible to scrape it all off. This would result in a loss of mass. However, if your filter paper is still wet, the moisture will add to your mass. So it's your call whether you want to weigh your solid on its own or with the filter paper and deduct the mass of the filter paper. When filtering hot liquids, such as for your recrystallization step, remember you're going to have to use either decanting or gravity filtration because we not, cannot vacuum filter hot liquids. So when performing a filtration of hot liquids, it's important to pre-warm your funnel with hot water. So simply run some hot water through your funnel just before you're going to do your filtering. This way, your filtrate won't cool rapidly in the stem of your funnel, causing any crystals to precipitate and clog up the stem of your funnel. I mentioned earlier that you might be provided with acetone for rinsing sample. So rinsing a solid with a solvent that does not react with it or dissolve it and has a very low boiling point can be really helpful in separating substances in a mixture because it helps to remove contaminating liquids. So you can think of your sand, which is going to be a little bit wet after gravity filtering or decanting, whichever way you choose to collect it. If you rinse that sand with some acetone, it'll help you to remove the excess water and then the acetone will evaporate rapidly, getting that sand really dry. It can also be used to help transfer a solid from a vessel. So if you did decant your sand and you want to get it out of your beaker, it'll be pretty difficult to just pour it out if it's still a little wet. So if you add some acetone, you can swirl that sand and pour it into a funnel or whatever step you're going to use next and then allow the acetone to evaporate off. Remember that the solvent you choose cannot react with any of your components of your mixture. It also can't dissolve any of your components of your mixture. So if you're still working with your mixture that contains acetanilide, you do not want to be using acetone in any of your rinses. Your lab instructor will be demonstrating this, um, how to fold a fluted filter, how to make the coffee filter for gravity filtration. But just as a little preamble, on the right you can see a picture of uh, someone holding one of these fluted funnels. This is what you hope yours will look like in the end. To make a funnel like this, begin by folding a circle in half. Open up that circle, turn it 45 degrees, and fold it in half again. Keep repeating this four times so that you end up with eight creases going the length of the circle. Once you have done this, flip the circle over and begin folding in half again, not on your preformed crease, but between the creases that you'd already made. Open it up, rotate 45 degrees, and fold again, and continue this so that you have a fold front, fold back, fold front, fold back in alternating order. Once you've done this, you can pinch the folds to make it shaped nicely like you see in the diagram. Alright, 
Now that you've successfully separated your mixture into three pure substances, it's time to determine the percent composition of each of those substances in the original mixture. Percent composition is calculated by dividing the mass of each pure component by the total mass of the sample and then multiplying by 100%. You will take the mass of each component, let's say sand, and then divide that by the original mass times 100%, and then acetanilide divided by the total mass times 100%, and then salt, and hopefully the sum of your percentages will all add up to 100%. Once you've done this, see your lab instructor for the true values of the percent composition and compare what you've calculated to these known values. You will determine your accuracy by percent error for the percent acetanilide in your mixture. If time permits, you may choose to further purify your acetanilide by recrystallizing again and then determining the melting point to assess how pure it is. If your instructor believes there is going to be time for this, I recommend that you refer to Experiment 3 in your lab manual and to the Experiment 3 PowerPoint lecture for information on how to determine a melting point and use a melt temp device. After you've watched this video and read your lab manual, you'll be asked to prepare a flowchart for your pre-lab assignment. A flowchart is a step-by-step -step diagram of an experimental procedure. It allows one to visualize each step and as it flows from one to the next. It indicates what the starting material is and what product is isolated in each step. Flowcharts are very useful for planning ahead and making sure that you have your equipment ready. They can also be helpful in visualizing or understanding the purpose behind each step in a long procedure. Be sure to fill out the flowchart for your pre-lab assignment. The pre-lab flowchart looks a little like this. The boxes indicate substances or materials, and the arrows indicate steps. So in the first box, we have our mixture containing salt, sand, and acetanilide. Weigh your mixture and determine its mass to the nearest 0.001 gram. You will then dissolve this in hot water and gravity filter it. What will be in the flow through? What will be in the filtered material? Fill in these boxes. The filtered material will be allowed to air dry. And then what pure product would you have left? On the other side, with the flow through, what would be your next step to separate the components in the flow through or the filtrate? What would be the filtered material and what would be the flow through of that process? What other process will you need to isolate the last component? Where would each of the pure components end up at the end of the process? Fill in each of these boxes and any other questions in your pre-lab before the start of class and don't forget to bring your lab coats and goggles. Have fun. Be safe.